Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Eddie Marcus, spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for all people. I'd like to start my conversation off tonight with the subject focus. America is going down, down. Sub topic, devil's food. Most people might be dissatisfied with a topic so negative because, you know, people believe that we should speak in a positive tone. Speak perhaps as you would things to be, not as they are. And in so doing, open up doors of avenues of progression. And sometimes we just like to have to tell it just like it is. And for so many, the story is America is going down, down. As a scientist, I've studied everything I need to study in order to understand America's fall. This fall is not new. Every would-be empire before this has fallen for the same reason. America is in this position because of the American people. The people that stand out as problematic are the U.S. presidents, all of them, except the ones that were murdered. The Congresses, U.S. Congresses, all of them. The justices, all of them. The governors and legislators, all of them. The mayors and the city councilmen, the aldermen, all of them. The churches, the cathedrals, the mosques, and every religious faith. Preachers and bishops and elders and the membership, including the Pope. Also, the police, the National Guards, those of the 501c3 the United Nations, the media, print, video and audio, the corporations, the businesses, the professionals, the teachers, the lawyers, the doctors, the entertainers, the schools, the unemployed, the employed, sports, the rich and the poor. All Americans are responsible the sick and those that are not dead. All Americans have turned their faces away from God. The ones that will dispute this claim, the schools, the churches, Every American denies peace and prosperity and, and joy for the people. And so does politics of the Republicans and the Democrats, the banks, the IRS. Every American is responsible for the falling of America, including your secret societies. You might ask, Why do I say this? And I can only respond by saying from where I am standing in the world. I see it for what it is. Made and designed to be paradise. But not to impose paradise. And the earth has met its requirements. But man, exercising his choice, has rejected it by those that abuse and others that accept it while creating hell instead. Some say it'll take a God to fix this mess. Now I say rather someone with the spirit of God residing in the person. Instead, 
pain and suffering is spreading throughout the land. Everywhere, people are losing jobs, health care, too costly. And all they seek is more money, more of the devil's food. <laughs> but the message that you get will not help you to understand things such as this. Because in truth of this fact, there are people who try to give the message of God who are not qualified, who have no idea the message of God. Some say they're called to preach, to be an agent for God. But what that really means, you were called to die. Well, I heard somebody say, how can I say that for anybody else? If I can say it for myself, then that's about as far as it can go. But I can say it for myself. And so I say for myself. And I say for those who are walking this path. You are called to die for righteousness. Being as a preacher. Being called. God has shown himself to you. In a way that eliminates all doubt. This requirement that God did for you that could not be done by any other and you the recipient realizes it so this cast away all distrust all possible doubt for you now know in the life that was it's passed on and now you got a new life it's not your own it is for God and still you got choice remembering a lies you are committed that knowing or that unknowing gets to know God through you those who have not had that experience that you have now they can get to see God through you because you become a living example you are an agent of God now this is what God does when God calls you to preach he qualifies you that's what that means by qualifying now ain't no doubt in you see the big problem is people don't believe in God they say they do but they don't even you you didn't believe in God. You said you did, but you didn't believe in God. So this is why this miracle occurred in your life, to eliminate that doubt. Now since that doubt has been eliminated in you, you have a special responsibility. You have been chosen. You have been chosen, my friend, to stand up and let the world see the God that saved you, that God that opened up your eyes so that you could see that world that appears to be spiritual, unseen to all others where the problems that exist in the material and the physical world do not exist there. And you see why they don't exist, which brings you with an education, with a heart-filled desire to see this polished by representing in physical form and in words for that way of living. For that where you run into a problem as you live and become your physical expression in the name of God. You there doing it. Giving them in actions and in words what they do not know. You are a physical, material, meant spiritual expression of God. Well... That's your chosen. So when a preacher comes here and says uh, he's a preacher, you can't say Jesus called him because Jesus, if you use his living as a reference, the people he called, he taught them. That's how he qualified. Took them with him. And you can't say, well, that's what the scriptures are for. Because the scripture has as many interpretations as there are people that read them. And that's okay. 
That's what you should have for yourself. Because the road that leads to destruction is wide and it's broad. But that word, that road that leads to life is straight, narrow. That means individual per individual. And so that gives an understanding of why the world is like it is with all these different organizations and everything going on and preachers living in mansions and having jets and flying all over the world talking about they're serving God. <laughs> and the only thing you profit that you can see in it is how rich they are getting. But they have no, my friends, they have no true understanding of God's compassion for the world. Sure, each of us have choice, but God will not leave you alone. God has called many people on amongst us and you. Some have accepted the charge, some have not, for whatever the reason. But I would like to state to everybody that's listening to me, there is no, I was talking to a guy tonight, a real smart guy, and uh, he was saying, how things are about being real and all of that stuff. And he was right on the money. He had analyzed society, the material, the physical society, just like it truly is. And I had no argument with that because it is real. But a lot of people who don't have not been born again, this is where their focus is limited within this parameters. But to have been born again, you have stepped outside and you've seen what has not been seen before, even by you, let alone the rest of the people. And it had, it's foreign, if you bring it to them, it's foreign to them, it was foreign to you, but now you have been introduced. And it doesn't take long to wake up in the spiritual world. And you can see quick. And you can make a choice. That's, you always make a choice. Being born again is a choice. <laughs> it is a choice. And it's a renewing of your mind. How much time I got there? Uh, I think it's about time I cut this off, maybe, but maybe a few more minutes. And I'm saying this to you, as my friend would say, why should anybody else's view be as your view? And I'm telling him that I'm speaking from experience. Whenever the things are rough, how those spirits, your father, how that same spirit that allowed you to still be here doing this truth that you now know is able to give you everything, your highest, well, my friend called it a personal high. <laughs> and it is. It's a personal high. If I could tell you, ladies and gentlemen, how you are rewarded, how I am rewarded, I'll tell you how I am rewarded. When I stand up for God and I don't give a heck what the devil says, when I don't give a heck what the judge say, when I don't give a heck what nobody says. And I know that they can't really condemn me because everything I do is perfect as far as benefiting not only me, but the vision of it has gone so far beyond me. I see it working for everybody. I see it working for everybody. And the only people that's pissed off with it is the people who benefit from messing over people. So I don't be giving a stat bucket hook. When I do that, you've heard people smoke cocaine or, or snort or whatever they do. Or what people do, some get drunk to try to build up their uh, confidence level and all that kind of stuff. I, I don't need, at that time, none of that could ever equal up to what the spirit inside of you does to you. And the more they come at you, the more they try to bring you down, that spirit in you just builds up. And up. sometimes you feel like you're going to explode with joy, with peace. And and you and, and everything that the world does to you, ugly, you see it as ugly. But you also see it as them not knowing any better. And so you start seeing it that this is absolutely necessary that you stand up and withstand everything that they do. I was in Washington, D.C. once. And I was... A few, man, maybe about quite a few years ago. And I was out talking to, making my travels across the country, telling people what I'm telling now on Facebook. Back then, I had no Facebook, so I walked the streets. I did found places to publicly speak to tell the people the same things I'm telling you. 
But I was in Washington, D.C., didn't have any place to stay, uh, any money, and I had spent the night at the, the bus station, and it was not comfortable at all sitting in a chair, sleeping all night long, and then getting up using the, the facilities just to freshen up, and back in the streets again all day. So one night, I decided I'd go to the jailhouse, and I told the judge, not the jail, judge, but I told the people in the jail, who I was, what I was doing, I was out doing this, what I just mentioned to you, and that I needed a place to sleep. Could they lock me up or they put me in a cell? They told me they couldn't do that. So, I got a little tired and didn't feel like going anywhere. I went back in the lobby and I sat in the lobby. And I just decided, I said, well, I might as well sit here all night. They asked me to leave. They didn't want me sitting there all night, and I wouldn't leave. So a little bit after maybe about 20 minutes waiting, they decided that they would physically remove me. So I think two or three of them came and they lifted me from this, uh, the the seating the seating, and took me out the door and took me down the stairway and threw me in the streets. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, they threw me in the streets in Washington D.C. outside a police station. And when they did, it was that part of the year where I had a trench coat on, you know, because at night it gets kind of chilly. And uh, my trench coat flew over my head. And when I landed in the street, I said, Father, I said, I, I am out here doing what you have given me to do. And I am being cast in the streets. I said, well, they threw me out here. I am not going to move a muscle. I stayed there on the street. I didn't turn over anything. I stayed in the position that they threw me. The coat kept me a little warm in certain spots. And I was glad part of it was over my head. And I was laying on that concrete. And at night, concrete is cold. That concrete was so cold I had to just lay there because I had to just lay there. Several times a car would come by and stop and guys my somebody would get out and start walking over to me and on one occasion a guy started talking to me. I didn't even look up at him, I stayed right under that coat. And he asked me was I okay checking on me. And I, we had a little short conversation and he after I explained what was going on, he got in his car and left. Now I sat there, laid there all that night. And you know the sweetest thing? was early the next morning that sun began to rise. And when it did, that concrete began to get a little warm. I was so happy I got up all this day. But I, when I got up, I was thrilled about that sun coming out. But more than that, I was thrilled that I had withstood what they had thrown at me. I felt so elated. And when I turned around and got up, what I realized, the cops had to guard me. So all night while they were, while I was laying in the street, a guard had to be watching to make sure that nobody messed with me. See, because they threw me in the street. It's not like I walked in the street and fell in the street. They threw me in the street. So they were basically responsible, responsible for me being laying out in the street. I didn't move. They don't know whether I was hurt. They don't know what was happening to me. They just knew I didn't move. <laughs> I guess they made the right move, though. Because they stayed out there watching me all night. In case some of those guys that stopped might have had another plan. Might want to see what I had on me. You know, if I'm out in the street helpless. They were scared away by those cops. So what I'm saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, is that spirit is in you, leading you. You can't be hurt. You cannot be hurt. Now, I'm going to cut this thing off. I've talked to you longer than you probably feel like sitting there listening to and uh, I'll, I'll continue this on another video, and it'll sort of be associated with the same title. Once again, I'm Eddie Marcus, spokesman and advocate for basic human rights for all people. And what I want to see, in case you didn't get it from what I've said up to this point, is I want to see every human being in the world at peace, prosperous, and joyous in their lives. And that all those things that are common for survival for all human beings, have them met, which includes food, clothing, shelter, education, health care, 
and to make sure that these things can occur. Each individual have a career of their own choosing whereby the master portrait that has been designed by the Creator can be met, can be painted, can be fulfilled, and we the people are the benefactors of it. This is our paradise. This is what my purpose is. This is what this mission is. And I'm doing it because I'm led by a Spirit of God who has love for those who are unknown. I have been chosen not to become anything other than a tool to be used for your benefit, because God loves you so much that in your ignorance, in your darkness, in the strange, crazy world that we've had since we've been here, God still loves you enough to challenge the devil, to challenge the lie, to you for truth. Bye-bye.